Two large storms will be coming to the United States over the next seven days, and these are going to cause some problems, including the risk of severe weather, which includes the threat of damaging winds and even a couple of tornadoes. Additionally, some of the coldest weather of the year is currently arriving to the United States, with many areas dropping below freezing this morning, and that could happen again tomorrow. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days, and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and right now we have a low pressure system that is sitting over the Ohio Valley this morning. This is actually going to bring a risk of severe weather today to parts of the mid-Atlantic with a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. Additionally a lot of cold air is currently coming off the back side of that low pressure system and that is why many of you this morning are waking up to feeling very cold. We have many areas across the southern plains including Dallas Fort Worth that have dropped as low as the mid to upper 30s. Even some freezing temperatures across the Texas Panhandle this morning and even back through Florida, we're waking up to areas in the 40s. So it is very cold out there. And if you've not yet felt this cold weather, you are going to feel it as we go into tonight and early tomorrow. Back over in the Atlantic Ocean, we still have Hurricane Melissa. This has been decreasing in intensity over the last 24 hours. It is down to a Category 1 hurricane. And unfortunately, this hurricane has cost the lives of over 50 people now, including 40 in Haiti, at least 8 in Jamaica. And those numbers are only going to increase as we continue to see search and rest rescue on go in both Jamaica, Cuba, and as well as Haiti. So this has been a devastating hurricane and right along the immediate southwestern coastline of Jamaica, we have seen catastrophic damage. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you some of that damage, but this hurricane has just been relentless. Luckily it is weakening. It will continue to move towards Bermuda later today, and it will at least bring some tropical storm impacts. And then all the way back over the Northern Plains, we have a little low pressure system that'll bring some scattered showers today to parts of the Northern Plains, but generally speaking, not that significant of a storm system. And this is some of the video of the destruction that Hurricane Melissa brought to Montego Bay in Jamaica. You can just see the utter destruction here to a hotel right along the coastline. And you obviously can only imagine how much worse it was for the people that lived in Jamaica. The damage was far more worse because those buildings are not built nearly as well as a hotel like this right along the coastline. And even in Montego Bay, this is in far northwestern Jamaica. This was not where it made landfall. And you can just see the destruction across the entire hotel and as well as the exterior roofs ripped off tons of trees fell down you can obviously see the caution tape everywhere that is purely because of all the damage that happened here so again prayers for jamaica if you know any friends or family here make sure that they are doing okay a lot of the cell reception is at least coming back to some extent here in jamaica which is good news for those that have any friends or family here and we are just about done with hurricane melissa bringing any sort of significant impacts to land it will pass by bermuda late tonight hurricane warnings are in effect will at least have tropical storm conditions but hurricane force winds are a possibility and then beyond that it'll become an extra tropical system by Friday as it passes by Canada and then it's out to sea all the way into the far northern Atlantic Ocean by the late weekend. Now the weather is about to change a ton across the United States as some of the coldest weather that we've seen in over six months is arriving and then on top of that we have two big storm systems that'll be causing some problems over the next seven days. So let's talk more about it. This is what the jet stream and mid-level flow looks like right now. Our jet stream is dipping all the way down to the Gulf Coast. That's helping to bring really cold air all the way down towards Florida and all along the Gulf Coast right now. We also have a low pressure system that is going to be sitting over Ohio throughout the daytime today. This will bring some severe weather, but more notably, our hurricane is going to be passing pretty close by the East Coast. I do want to point out that there will be some dangerous rip currents for the next couple of days from Florida back through New England because of Melissa. And on top of that, as this low pressure system moves to the Northeast tonight, we are going to see some very strong winds across New England tomorrow morning. We could see wind gusts up to 60 to 70 miles per hour in some areas. By tomorrow morning, our jet stream and mid-level flow will get a little bit more westerly, which means our really cold and chilly air is not going to be nearly as intense for those that are living along the East Coast, comparatively to areas like Oklahoma and Texas, where temperatures have dived all the way into the 30s and 40s this morning. As we go into Saturday and Sunday, another storm system is forecasted to develop across the Mississippi Valley. I do think this will bring some strong to severe storms Sunday and Monday across the South. Southeast. Also, localized flooding is a possibility and some high wind gusts. Notice how close it'll get to the Gulf Coast by Monday. It's not going to become a tropical system, but it will be a powerful storm for the Southeast for this time of the year. And then by the middle of next week, we're going to possibly be watching for one more little storm system to make its way across the Great Lakes and into the Northeast, with maybe some isolated showers and thunderstorms being a possibility. And then by the end of next week is when things may start to get a little bit more active in the United States. But as of right now, anything really beyond 
Thursday of next week is a lot more hard to predict at this time. Now, these are our temperature anomalies, basically giving us an idea of where above and below average temperatures are located, and we have very well below average temperatures all across the southeast and to the southern plains this morning, many areas in the 30s, 40s, and low 50s, depending on where you're located. As we go into tomorrow, that cold air is going to make its way all along the east coast. It will not be nearly as powerful of those light blues, basically meaning up to about 5 to 10 degrees below average. We'll get another little shot of cold air across the northern plains on Friday, and then by Saturday and Sunday, we're going to continue to have below average temperatures for most of the east coast and also the southern plains, and then early next week is when things begin to change again. Warm air is going to return to the Great Plains, not dramatically warmer than average, but it'll be right around average for most areas. Shot of cold air is expected across the southeast as that storm system brings showers, thunderstorms, and severe weather, and then by the end of next week is when it starts to get a lot warmer across the Great Plains. Some areas could be nearing record-breaking high temperatures, so talk about a pretty crazy swing of weather here over the next seven days. Now, I just want to reference this graphic because these are the low temperatures that we are dealing with this morning in the United States. Many areas, even in central Texas, dropped below freezing. There were freeze warnings in effect. Tomorrow morning is going to be a little bit different. It'll be slightly warmer across the southern plains. Freezing temperatures will continue across the central and northern plains in the Midwest. And then as we go into Friday afternoon, our temperatures will only be in the 30s and 40s across the northern plains and the upper Midwest. Gulf Coast is going to get back into the low 70s. But again, phenomenal weather for this time of the year. It looks like a perfect fall day on Friday for most of the country. And then Saturday morning, below freezing temperatures are likely across even parts of Arkansas, Missouri, back into the northern Ohio Valley, Midwest, and as well as the Northeast. Now, over the next few days, we're going to be dealing with some different storm systems. Beginning with today, showers and thunderstorms are expected across the Northeast. There's a low-end threat of severe weather across parts of the Mid-Atlantic. We'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Melissa is going to make a close pass by as we go into tonight, and then as we go into tomorrow, look how high the winds are going to get here across the Northeast. These tight isobars are representing a very tight pressure gradient, and that means that we are going to be dealing with high winds tomorrow across the Northeast with a very strong low pressure system that is going to develop down 974 millibars by Friday night. So very strong winds in the forecast for the Northeast tomorrow. And then Saturday, Sunday, high pressure will be dominating for most of the United States. A storm system will form along the Gulf Coast late Sunday and Monday. That'll bring some showers, thunderstorms, isolated severe weather as well. And then by the middle and end of the week, things are pretty quiet. And our, then our next big storm system may come in sometime around the tail end of next week into the weekend. But again, that is still uncertain at this time. Now, we do have a tornado risk for about 20 million people today. This is across the mid-Atlantic, including areas like Washington, D.C., Baltimore, even along the Carolina coastline. And this actually is driven by the threat of tornadoes. Notice how there is an isolated damaging wind risk. That's mainly from around Virginia Beach back through Cape Hatteras. But this is our tornado risk. That is what is driving the majority of our tornado or severe weather threat for today. So if you're anywhere in Maryland, if you're back over in southern New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, Delaware, even across the mid-Atlantic coastline, make sure that you're staying weather aware and have ways to receive warnings. This tornado threat is going to be mainly this morning into the early afternoon hours. So this is the timing for today. This is what it looks like right now out there. We got some showers out there, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder. By about 9 to 10 o'clock this morning, we'll have a few little storms that are going to be trying to rotate. There's actually quite a bit of wind shear in this environment with this low pressure system. So I would not rely on an isolated tornado or two. Any tornadoes that happen will be on the weaker side of things, but definitely something to keep an eye out for. And then by 2 to 3 o'clock this afternoon, most of these are going to be pretty disorganized, just a lot of rain for the most part that's going to be moving across the northeast. So the severe weather timeline here is basically from about now, which is when you're watching this forecast, all the way through about 12 to 1 o'clock. And then things are going to start to wind down, and then plenty of rain is coming for New England tonight, and then tomorrow morning things will dry out. And get ready for a windy next couple of days along the east coast, especially in the northeast, where wind gusts today will be peaking up to 30 to 40 miles per hour, right ahead of a big storm system, and then tomorrow it'll get even windier with many areas across the northeast, including New York City, with wind gusts peaking up to 40 to 60 miles per hour as Melissa passes to the east, and that obviously intense low pressure system is continuing to intensify. And then Saturday, things will definitely start to calm down with wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour, and then Sunday and Monday looks beautiful, and then back over the Midwest, it'll be pretty windy on Monday as a storm system will be passing by with wind gusts around 40 to 45 miles per hour across Wisconsin and Michigan. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I also want to remind you all that we have a 24-7 live stream. This is our camera live stream on the second channel, More Max Velocity. You can watch this with the top link in the description below. It has over hundreds of cameras across the country. And on top of that, very relaxing music. So make sure to go check it out, and we'll see you all again in the next video or live stream.